each day. Uh, our guys are eager, energetic, focused. It's a wonderful group. We're really excited to coach them, and we're all really excited for well, we got to play Monday, so you can't mess around. This is six weeks. Uh, you got to get right to it. And so we have good practice. We're going to go through some concepts. And the biggest thing for these guys and for us as a staff is you know, we got to respect FIBA. It's not the NBA. It's FIBA. It's a totally different game. So our focus this first week, especially learning the FIBA rules, making sure that by the time the competition starts, the rules are distinct. Complex is not a word that we're going to use <laughs> in USA basketball very often, just due to the nature of the six weeks. Um, and, and part of my coaching experience with USA basketball and the, the help of so many of these guys, Chip England, Jeff Gundy, Sean Ford, the guys who were here in the team, we got we've got to carry forward the experience that we have, you know, good and bad, and uh, understand how we can make things more efficient and uh, understand the timeline and how quickly this thing starts. So, simpler is better. What are some of the stuff you learned from this? Uh, I think the uh, you know, learning to keep the rules, um, you know, one of the rules, for example, all is taken out of bounds underneath all the time. Whereas on the, in the NBA, it's on the sideline. Uh, so, statistically, you, you run eight baseline out of bounds plays in the NBA. Two and a half. Better execute better offensively, you better execute defensively on those specific eight plays of the game. We almost lost, uh, we did lose in the preliminary game to France two years ago uh, when they scored, I think, on three out of bounds plays in the second half. So you, know, you, you plant that in your brain and you work a little harder on those two plays. So does everybody. You know, you always worry a little bit about that because uh, the first day of camp, you know, it's going to be intense and you know, anxious. And, uh, so how tired are they going to be from the scrimmage? Everybody came in in really good shape. Where did Jeff and Jeff go? Just to have him around. I mean, he's a good job. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. What's that happen here? What's that? Have guys, not just him, other fans. What's that happen? Yeah, I mean, Jeff's a brilliant basketball player. Coaching for so long, and he's so outstanding. And his finger on the pulse of everything that's happening in India and Cuba. He's always coaching the, uh, the qualifying teams. Um, and then our familiarity with the qualifying team in 2020 is really key. So it's a huge help to me and to the whole staff. And then the final part, which is maybe the most important part, is he's hilarious. So, you really need a sense of humor with the coaching staff when you're here for six straight weeks, so we love the director. Can we ask an NBA question? Yeah. We'll talk of NBA to Vegas. What are your thoughts generally on that at some point? What expansion comes down the road? It feels right. It feels right. Uh, and obviously it's not, not my uh, department, but um, you know, Vegas and Seattle seem to be uh, such smart. Uh, Franchises. You know, it's a shame that we ever lost the Sonics in the first place. Uh, but as you look forward and you think of what we need, we need a couple of Western time slots. Um, think about all the double headers on TV now, where the second game is starting at 8:40 Central Time. Um, we, we lost we lost a couple of West Coast time slots back when then, uh, Seattle and Vancouver left the league. It hurt the TV schedule. It hurt. The whole league schedule. You, you, know, you factor in the Vegas, you know, the time slot, but also just how great the venue is for summer league USA basketball. The fans here have proven they'll come out. They love the Aces. The, uh, the Knights just won the Stanley Cup. I mean, this is the Raiders are filling it up every every Sunday. So. It seems like a, a really good next year. You got a Final Four for a tournament here this year too. Is, is that right? right? The tournament, yeah, the Final Four. The NCAA Final tournament. Four. No, no, the the in season NBA tournament. 
forgot about that. <laughs> that's very important. That's for first time. Yes. First time, so that's yes. understandable. Yes. Yes. But that's here in Vegas. That's, that's good. Good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. You got a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 When you look at 2019 and you reflect on that, what do you think you guys felt for maybe as a program? Why did you have the results that you wanted? What do you take away from that experience for these guys? Well, I think the experience um, matters. And I think, uh, you know, you. Uh, take what you learn from that in terms of how to handle your practice sessions, maybe what kind of lineup combinations you're going to play, maybe uh, what you run. But you also will all walk away with great respect for the feedback the teams. These are a great teams. This is, this is not uh, 1954 or whatever, where the American teams used to steamroll. So it's an international game. So when you look at the NBA and three of the top four or five players in the league are international players, it translates. Their international teams are really good too. So our our focus is we respect the FIBA game, we respect the hell out of our opponents because they're damn good. And we're gonna do everything we can to win and uh, let the chips fall where they need to out top. We think it's gonna be some of it. Definitely not being. We're going to have to do some research. That's one area where we may not be. You're to fit in there. Yes. How, uh, some of the things you've learned in terms of balancing out lineups and figuring out how you're going to play. Over the next few weeks, do you figure out you're going to start the rotation? What are the things you're going to look for to figure that out? How has the experience you've had in the last year or something before? The way you're going to want to play? Yeah, I mean, it tends to shake out over the first week or two where, as a coaching staff, we're watching the tape every day, we're seeing different combinations, and then we're thinking about the substitution patterns from there. So it, it tends to play out, but um, it's, it's not easy because usually you're talking about 12 starters in the NBA. And I think that's the case here. Maybe Bobby Portis is a six-man. Um, Maybe uh, Walker has came off the bench a little bit for Utah, but uh, well, for the most part, these guys are all starters and uh, great players. And uh, part of the uh, FIBA commitment is how that stuff happens. You know, there's no contracts on the line. Uh, nobody's getting traded. Uh, this is just us for six weeks, and. Um, I expect uh, the same thing to happen here as what happened, uh, you know, in, in 21, where, and, and in 19, frankly, uh, in terms of the buy-in and the effort and the energy and the intensity, and um, we'll see what happens. Along with, what did we see today? Uh, I just uh, With evenly by, so we split the bigs up. And, uh, we didn't want. Tyrese and uh, Jalen because we wanted to each to run a team and then we just put the wings down. So there was zero, zero thought in terms of starters, but I appreciate the way you stuck that in there. Oh, didn't you? Me to fight. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I mean, I know it's day one, but what do you see for Bain? Yeah, he is skilled and he is uh, raw, uh, but yes. he's a good one. Yes. It's really open to the coach and yes. uh, can play multiple positions, yes. put the ball on the floor, really a yeah, three three young 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 and just a great game. Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 We were thrilled with every every guy here. I mean, it's just, this is a, it's a six week commitment, you know, out of these guys off season, which is a, there's no uh, small thing, like you're, you're talking about sacrifice for the family and for the player. And, uh, so every one of these guys, there's a reason they're all here. They're talented and they want to be here. And this, this, this experience is going to be really meaningful. From a I got a last local question for you. As far as Las Vegas, you being a California guy and you know, also Arizona and everything else, West Coast guy, you ever think that Las Vegas is kind of a sports mecca? I mean, with all this ever happening? Yeah, not, not, not when I was in college. I remember coming in here to play UNLV. Uh, maybe 87 or so. And this that was the only show in town because the Runner Rebels. So now you come in here and uh, you see what's happening uh, with the Raiders and the Knights and the Aces and Summer League and uh, USA. And, uh, I hope not. I'm going to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'm Bay Area guy. I, I hope yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. But, 
No, this is a I guess it's, yeah, it's big time sports city. Hey, coach. Culture... With that said, I want you to stay in Oakland, Ace. All right. From a culture standpoint, Coach K used to talk a lot about duty and honor and those kinds of things. I know with the Warriors and strength and honor versus joy. What do you want your version of USA basketball to be known for? Uh, I guess from a culture standpoint. Well, I, we, we all want our guys to represent our country and our class, represent the NBA, represent each other. We want people to be proud of, of us and the effort. Obviously, we want to win. Um, but um, the biggest thing is, you know, six weeks. You make the commitment, you play together, you play as hard as you can, and uh, you do it with, with dignity, you represent yourself well, and then it's competition. This is why we do it. We, we either win or we lose, but uh, the other things you can control, winning and losing, sometimes it's up to the ball going in or not, but uh, we're very confident. You Let's get ready for Hoop Jazz.